Welcome back. We need to find a way into this building that seems to be at the heart of the pipe network. Can we just walk past the guards like we do everywhere else? There's official Azadi business going on here. You'll want to turn around and walk away. Nope. Looks like these guards are too vigilant for that. But, um... Even if we could, we might not be able to get in the door. Who knows? We do need to get rid of the guards, however. And we overheard an interesting conversation they had about rats getting into the pipes. Maybe if we can recreate that little accident, they would need to clean it up again. And that would be a way for us to get past them. The pipe carrying the metal orb leads into that building. I knew it was important. Well, it does have uh, the world's largest number of pipes coming out of it, so... It's not that big of a stretch to think it was important. I was right. And there's no one around to tell. Shadow. A missed opportunity for a proper righteous gloat. I must find a way into that building. Too bad for Keon, he does not get to gloat. Nor does he get to drink any uh, Merry Minstrum. Because he can't even look at it. Uh, those gates are closed. Alright, if we want to do what we did before, we need to find some rats. It's surprisingly quiet out. Usually these tables are busy Same until late at night. Same as the other tables. Granted it is chilly and damp. This Everyone's thing wouldn't fit in the pipes. Inside. Whatever it is, it's a weird looking thing. No, we need rats. And this is actually also the time where you want to bring back the tools. Oh, hey, look at Bip over there. So we meet again, Azadi. Prepare your blade for battle. Goddess, it's late, boy. You should be in bed. So should you. What are you doing now? Chasing rats. Um, how does he know that? We just walked past here. I'm too busy to be talking to the boy, and he really shouldn't be out. The streets aren't safe for magicals. The boy appears genuinely interested. I've been told this is rare in children. Perhaps I shouldn't discourage him. Well, he did help us before, so maybe he can help us again. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Are you that hungry? Rats taste like sewage. Trust me. You're better off eating table scraps. Uh, I'm not eating the rat. I need it for... It's work-related. It is. Okay. Well, don't let me keep you from your rats. Are you just going to sit there? Not every night I get a chance to watch you catch a rat. Fair point. Um, and I think that rather than actually going to, um... Like... Uh, rather than going back to the rooster and kitten yourself, you can actually give the tools back to... Uh, give the tools to Bip to return. Let's try that. Bip, do me a favor. Take this back to the bar and give it to Elvik. What is it? Stop being nosy or you'll lose it. Your nose, I mean. Elvik knows what it is. I don't know. What's in it for me? I won't smack you upside your head. You wouldn't do that anyway. What else? Someday you'll make a ruthless merchant. How about a coin? You'll get an iron coin when you're done. And perhaps a big cup of really strong ale? You're... ten? Sure, why not? You've got yourself a deal, Azadi. <laughs> and he's gone now. I'm not sure if he comes back if you do that. Well, the only thing he's good for otherwise is sitting here and commenting on your attempts. So, might be a lot quieter, actually, if he's not here. Ah, yams. A few weeks ago, I'd never tasted yams. Now I can't get enough. I'm a budding yam aficionado. You know, I'm beginning to think that despite what he said in the beginning, uh, Keon isn't actually gay, he's a yam sexual. Diced and steamed yams. There are so many ways to prepare yams. They truly are the king of foods. 
king of foods. Sure. Ah, yams. A few weeks ago, I'd never tasted yams. Now I can't get enough. I'm a budding yam aficionado. Can we eat the yams we just picked up? I guess not. These delicious things must hail from the western slopes of the first mountain. Who knew a thing that grows in the earth could taste so heavenly? Yes, we get it. Kian likes yams. I can't eat them, though. Maybe we can use them in our rat hunt. It's a leftover cheese and meats plate. I've dined here. The food's good. I would never have left any bits uneaten. Oh, we gave... I was just wondering if we gave uh, Habib the map, too. We did, apparently. There's some cheese left, but that's all. Cheese seems a lot more useful in catching rats than yams would be. But maybe that's just me. Let's see if we can get one of those rats. Ground crawlers. Filthy rodents. They're too quick. Hmm. Well, maybe if we lay out some food for them, that will work. How can you not want yams? You vermin are truly beyond all hope of redemption. I guess rats are not fans of yams. Good to know. All right, we'll try cheese instead. They won't come close as long as I'm standing here. Oh. Well, that's not very helpful then, because, yeah, they just ate it and now they're gone. There's actually two ways of doing this. First way is to use the straight section of pipe, put the cheese in it, and then you can pick up the pipe when the rat is in it. That is not the way I used when I first played, therefore I'm not going to use it now either because I didn't actually figure that one out by myself, I just read about it. The other thing you can do, and it's probably also the more humane thing to do, considering what's going to happen to that rat, is get some more of that Evensong. And mix that in with the cheese. And now, hopefully, when the rats eat the cheese, they will fall asleep. And it will be a lot easier to catch them that way. Here's some particularly potent cheese. Filthy shadow spawn. Eat it. Eat it all. They won't come close as long as I'm standing here. That sounded unnecessarily malicious, uh, Kian. Is one of them falling asleep? That's is it breathing? There we go. I don't know. And I don't care. It's a rat, and it's not moving. Which is what we wanted. A comatose ground crawler. Just what I need. Alright, we got ourselves a rat. That's just a great thing to be carrying around. It's a ground crawler, a snake tail, a brown fur, a street pigeon, a rat. Beloved child has many names. Soundly trounced. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Well, we probably want this thing to go towards the building, meaning we should not be using that particular hatch. We should be using this one. All right, my little rat friend. Bon voyage. What was that sound? 
It was a squishy sound, sort of like... You've got to be kidding me. Not again. Shut a damn ground crawlers. I guess it's on us to clean up the mess. That bloody engineer in there's not gonna do it. So yeah, it's on us. <sighs> Light. Well, let's get to it. No time like the present. Okay, that worked. Gross, by the way. Um... See? It's a lot more humane to have the rat passed out before you do that to him. Apparently a lot of people had, or uh, some people had, a lot of trouble with uh, the fact that you have to kill a rat here to pr proceed. I don't really care, honestly. It's a rat. And... Um, it's a fictional rat at that, so... Can't say I will be losing any sleep over that. Alright, let's see if we can actually go inside this building. And what we will find there. Okay, now that looks interesting. What is this? Damn, Gen couldn't think up this construction. This is where the pipes converge. They're all going into that huge orb. I'm no goal. Investigate the building to learn more about the pipes. Well, that's what I'm doing. I knew this building was important. It must be a hub of sorts to the web of pipes. If Liko and Enu were here, I'd afford myself a rare gloat. As it stands, I'll have to settle for a smug feeling of self-satisfaction. Maybe you'll get to gloat later. It's a massive chamber of some sort. It sounds hollow. It's rumbling and there's steam coming out of it. It's a huge metal orb, like the tummy of a giant mechanical man. I think I've had this dream once. Um, that's a weird dream. So, tiny orbs all come from the large orb. Interesting. It's a massive chamber of some sort. It sounds hollow. It's rumbling and there's more metal tubes leading down to these odd tables. Interesting. The sooner we find out what all the pipes are for, the closer we are to understanding what the tower is up to. Indeed. Maybe that guy over there can tell us. More metal tubes leading down to these odd tables. Can look at those odd tables? No. Can look at the guy. Someone's down there. Someone's down there. Can we look at the stuff there? No. Well, let's go down there and see if this person is, uh, can be convinced to telling us more. Hopefully we won't have to torture him for that. I don't know what these are. But they put me in mind of a lady's vanity. Except with knobs. Lots and lots of knobs. Um, uh, okay. These are probably work tables. Although I've never seen work tables with gauges and meters and knobs before. Yeah, they seem to be control panels for something. I don't know what these are. But they put me in mind of a lady's vanity. Except Spiral with Spiral staircase. Knobs. Are we playing lots King's Quest all of a sudden? Knobs. There's a green board there. More commonly called a blackboard, I do think. <laughs> There's mathematics on that board. I've learned the fundamentals of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. But the numbers on that board are like Crystarian runes to me. Completely meaningless and somewhat disturbing. I recognize instruments such as these from cloud ships. Gauges and meters for reading things like pressure, height, and humidity. Why would they need that here? on the ground. Displaying aspects of the pipe network's operation, I would assume. 
The instruments probably provide information relevant to the pipe network. If only I could read them. But unfortunately, we cannot. The numbers are flickering. It looks like sorcery. But I'm sure this is science. That's... those are numbers? Are we gonna have to learn the Azani number system in this game? No, we don't, unfortunately. What could it be? There's mathematics involved, certainly. But I've never seen numbers changing so rapidly without someone doing calculations. He's one of the people who work here. I've noticed others like him entering and exiting. They're odd-looking. He has the posture and dress of an academic, but he doesn't look like any scholar I've seen. More of the metal machines that have been put up all over town. But these look different. Bigger, shinier, more modern. How would you even be able to tell if they're more modern? It all looks very impressive. It must have taken a great many resources and a great deal of work to assemble these. More of those odd metal orbs. They're doing something to them here. Altering them. Yeah, it looks like every single one of these stations has one of those orbs in them. Sometimes multiple. The orbs appear to be an important part of the machinery. Well, I guess we're not going to find out what's going on unless we talk to that guy. Somebody has been very careless with their papers over here. Well, I certainly can't read any of this, so... Nope, we're going to have to talk to him. Oh, oh! Um, you're not supposed to be here. This place is for engineers only. Please leave or I'll be forced to call the guards. I have a very loud voice when I'm scared. One sound and you'll be standing on the slopes of the first mountain, yelling at clouds. Goddess. Oh, no problem. I'll be quiet as a... Uh, you're from Azadir. I've seen your profile in embroideries. I never forget a nose. You're the Apostle. Apostle Elvani. You're famous. Maybe once. Now I'm just Kian. Your turn. My, my turn what? Your name. Who are you? Ferdows. I'm Ferdows, lead engineer. I don't know what that means. What do you do? Don't you know? I, I thought you would have known. You know, from back when you were... I'm in charge of the team that encodes the spheres that make the engine tick. What engine? The engine that... <laughs> you, you know, the engine. There's only one engine. The one that encompasses the entire city. It's, it's what all the pipes are connected to. Didn't they tell you anything when you were... Y you know, before you were a traitor? Assume that I know nothing. What is this engine for? The engine calculates. That's why they call it the calculating engine. <laughs> Big numbers, complex equations. I, we, uh, my team, we give the engine instructions about how and what to calculate. This is called coding. I, I understood none of that. You, you can't be here. You're a fugitive and, and, um, this is a restricted zone. That's like... Two things that mean you shouldn't be here, and I could probably think of more if you need me to. I have a sword, and I'm bigger than you. Those are two things that count in your favor, granted. So what does this calculating engine do? What's its purpose? I'm, I'm really not supposed to. Right. Bigger and sword. As I said, it calculates. I mean, it does more than that, but that's what it was built to do. It's core functionality. It adds, subtracts, multiplies numbers. Big numbers. And it does things with those numbers. Like, um, like... Have you ever watched the stars in the sky at night? I'm not just a man with a sword. Of course. And you've seen how those stars move across the sky. Using a calculating engine, we can actually track those stars and predict where they're going to be in a year from now, or a century, or where they were a century ago. Why are you tracking stars? 
Well, we're not. I mean, it's, it's just an example. We're not actually tracking stars. I mean, sure, we could if we wanted to, but... We're tracking dreams. Dreams? Dreams are very complex, which is why we need a big engine with lots of ticking parts to make complex calculations and predictions. Right, so the part about not just being a man with a sword? Assume that's all I am and start over. Yes, fine. Um, those pipes crisscrossing the city, they're sort of like, um, like speaking tubes connecting a hundred sage masters, each with his or her own field of specialty. So, it's like a university? Well, I guess. Yes. Yes, this is a good comparison. A whole city filled with clever brains. The spheres pass messages between the different masters, and between them and us. We write messages, and we interpret messages. We tell the individual brains what to think about, and then they do the thinking, and report back to us. Now, this allows us to write ever more complex messages, until finally, we have the code we need. The ultimate message. That one, we send to the tower. Why? Because... because that's where the biggest brain of them all is located. This is the hub of the pipe network, the engine's core, its heart, the nucleus of the meta... Well, y you understand. The fact is, this is the most advanced and scientific task anyone's ever taken on, and we're doing it. You should be proud. Why are you doing it? Well, I... I... I don't quite know. Because we can? Because no one else can? Because the Prophet told us to, and gave us the tools to do it. So, you don't know what it's for? I write the instructions. I'm the, um, I'm the man in the middle. Someone tells me what they need, and I tell the engine how to compute the answer. This is my job. Who knows what the engine is for? The Six, probably. The Prophet, certainly. Emissary Saya, I would imagine. <laughs> this is above my pay grade. Above your... I was hired to write instructions for the engine and compute the spheres, not to ask questions. And... and not to answer yours either, Mir. You really should go before someone comes. We'll both be in terrible trouble. They usually check on me all the time. I wonder why they haven't. I still don't understand. Why build all of this here in Mercuria? Why not in Sadir? Because of the tower and what's below it. Vast eddies of, um, meta-energies. Meta... do you mean magic? 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 Of course not magic. This engine is, is, is the opposite of magic. It's the culmination of everything Azadir has strived for these last hundred years. An end to chaos and uncertainty. An end to superstition and irrationality. An end to magic. When the engine's fully operative and the programming complete, we won't need sorcerers or witchcraft anymore. We'll be able to do anything we want, with science. Reshape reality, rewrite the laws of the cosmos, remove death and disease, poverty and warfare. The world will be run by scientists for the betterment of humanity. What do dreams have to do with it? The engine feeds on the... on, on the building blocks of reality. Um, Ideas, stories, dreams. Magic is highly detrimental to the system. See, sorcery causes chaos, injects uncertainties and, and, and fallacies into our calculations. So, is that why magicals are, are being relocated? We can't have them around while the engine's calculating, but as soon as we're done... You we... believe they're being relocated? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, of course. I mean, it's what they told us. Why would they lie? It's simple. The engine isn't compatible with magic, and we don't want anyone getting hurt. There's no room for sorcery in Mercuria. The magicals are better off in their new homelands. They're being sent to prison camps. Re-education camps. This is true, yes, but only temporarily. This is their first stop. 
Afterwards, they're given passage to their new homelands, where they can- Do you really believe that? What would the Magicals be re-educated to do? Forget that they're Magicals? No, Vadaus. That's not the truth. They're imprisoned. Killed. They're not given a new home. But they told us. They said they were... They, they promised they'd be safe. And happy. And... Oh, light protect them. So this is why we're sending all the Magicals away from Mercuria. Because of the engine. I... Yes. Yes. That's why. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> there are children. There are. They lied to us. Do you need to remove all Magicals before starting up this calculating engine? It's already running. I'm... I'm not... As long as the thermaturgical interference is below the acceptable threshold for... Pretend that I'm a very small and possibly very stupid child. Oh. No. No, they don't, they don't need to get rid of all of the Magicals. Just enough not to disrupt our calculations. We'll be done instructing the network in a couple of days. After that, they can pull the lever whenever they want. That's the last component of the engine. The tower. The one that will start feeding on and molding the dreams. Changing the world for the... For the better. Yeah. I, um... I believe the official ceremony is a few days from now. The emissary will be there, together with the first, and the prophet, and... And... And please don't kill me. I'm not going to kill you. But what you're doing here is not the will of the goddess, Fadaus. Something is going on. Someone's... Kian. I had a feeling it was you. Mia? Goddess, what are you doing here, Hami? Where are your men? Right outside. They can be here in seconds. You, engineer. What's your name? I threatened him. He played no part in this. Fadaus. I'm... For Dows. You lied. I beg your pardon? You promised they'd be safe. I've no idea what you're talking about. Go, for Dows. This is not about you. Just remember what I told you. You're not doing the work of the goddess here. Old Town was a distraction. Vamon meant it to be a struggle for my men to die. He wanted to take my mind off the investigation. Commander Vamon and the Emissary have been lying to me about your death. Why is that? Because I'm a danger to them. And it's not the only thing they've lied to you about. This engine... You betrayed us. You joined the enemy. To stop Sire and Vamon, not to fight our people. Not to fight you. Sister Sire is the Emissary. Commander Vamon is your superior officer. They are your people. They are traitors, Mir. They have betrayed our nation, our faith, and... You should have come to me first, Apostle. You should have come to me. Instead, you've shamed me. You've shamed Mother Utana, the Six, the Goddess, your nation. When I received word someone had been spotted entering this house, I had a feeling it was you. I entered alone for two reasons. One, as a courtesy to the Mother, it would break her heart again to hear that you perished in dishonor, fighting my guard. And two, your living proof that Vamon has lied to me. I cannot reveal my hand to Vamon, but I also cannot let you go. You'll surrender to me now, without struggle, and you'll be brought to Sadir tonight, in secret. The courts will decide your fate. For the time being, while I sort out this mess, you'll be locked away under a false name. No one will know you're alive. When I'm ready to confront the Commander and the Emissary with their lies, I will reveal the truth about your survival, and you will cooperate every step of the way. Ask Sire and Vermon about the camps, and what they're doing to- You lied. You lied to us. You told us they would not be harmed. You told us they'd be safe. There were children! Get off me, you idiot! Go! Go, Keon! Make them pay for this! Stop that! Get off me! I'll have you beheaded for this! 
Shadow, damn you, man! Leave this place, now! Bib! That can't be good. So it seems like the engine is some kind of computer to manipulate dreams? That also can't be good. Well, at least we have some idea of what they're doing, I guess. Yes? Mother. It's the General. He asks to speak with you. Send him in, child. Hami, is anything the matter? It's Kian. He's alive. Oh! Goddess. Goddess, be praised. How do you know this? He broke into the engine room down on City Green. Light. What was he doing there? Speaking with one of the engineers, Fadaos, a young man from the southern provinces. Kian said... Oh. Well, it's of no consequence. He's a traitor. He's joined the resistance. But... It is as I suspected. We have been lied to by Vamon and the Emissary. For what reason? That I don't know. Yet. And until we do, we cannot confront the Mother. I agree. We don't know how firm their grip is on the tower. If they know that we know... What about Kian? Was he here? How did he look to you? He looked strong. Different, but strong. He must have his reasons for doing what he's doing, Hami. Kian would never betray Azadir, or his faith. Perhaps, but that's what he's doing. I gave him the honorable choice to turn himself in and face righteous judgment. But he fled, like a coward, when the engineer attacked me. Attacked? I don't blame the man. Kian poisoned his mind with baseless lies. My men detained him, and I've placed him somewhere safe, somewhere he can't tell anyone what he saw and heard. Out of Vamon's reach. We need to keep this between us, or we run the risk of alerting the Commander and Emissary Saya. Much as I'd like to hunt down Kian myself and put him to the sword, we must be patient. Let's trust the Goddess Hami to illuminate our path and bring us to the truth. I certainly hope she will. The plot thickens. Hami knows we're alive now. And you might be tempted to think that this is the point where you could return the tools, but no. Guy's already gone, so no, you cannot. I guess we'll fill in uh, Liko and Enu and Ulvik, um, and it looks like Anna's also there, um, on what we've learned in the next video.